Amazing. Two frames faster. That's yep. why splits don't matter, guys, because we retime our runs perfectly anyways after. They're, they're, they're like little reference points. Or, di or did it, you perfectly split throughout the entire game? No. You had to retime. I right? mean, the splits are pretty accurate until the last one, but the last one's definitely not. Yeah. Okay, three, two, one, go. Right on. Hey, look at that smile he's got going on. He knows it's the run. Splicer. <laughs> okay, so you get it here. We get to see. We get to see the magic. Oh, you didn't even go for oh, it. Oh, yeah. I got tired of trying for it. Every once in a while, I'll do that. Okay, yep. so I have to ask before we get too nitty gritty. What's in the top right corner? I don't understand what that is. I, at first, I thought it was like a camera facing your TV for like legitness, but it's got this weird angle. Yeah, that you have to give me money to for me to answer that. Oh my gosh, I didn't know it was that serious, guys. It's a good thing yeah, I never asked in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> How impossible is it to... Oh, we're not even at that part yet. Uh, <laughs> You're laughing. There's something I'm missing, for sure. There's, that's, there's, I, yeah. There's definitely usually, an inside stream joke there. It is, yeah. Um, I just, It's one of those questions I get all the time. Oh. I was like, screw it. I'll just demand people will give me bits or ban them if they ask that question. Well, I hope you stream later tonight and give you some bits. But I don't actually, I, want that I don't, I don't actually ban them. I just time them out for a while. Right. But I tell, I'm telling them I'm going to ban them, but I don't. Just time out. So how come you're like throwing your arms up and down the arm pumping? The arm pumping pushes you forward of a uh, pixel every time. It's not like a frame that you save every time you do it because it's a measurement. You know, it's like a yeah. It's you get rearranged. To you forward. Yeah, you get rearranged once you go through the door, anyways, right? So mm -hmm. it's sectional, essentially. It's it's sort of like you know, two pumps is one frame. That's kind of a good approximation of what it does. So so if you did two, more, if you did like three or four less arm pumps than the record you have now, you wouldn't have beat the record. Correct. And that moonfall in the beginning, I did it in the new record. So that was the time save. That, that was the time save. Not so yep. silly anymore, is it? Exactly. Well, yeah, man. Once once he gets this game to, did you ever feel like your strats were capped, and then you would watch a tasser and like pick out like three things? You're like, okay, I should work on this and this and this to try and save a little time. Or have you always just been like, let's try and push this as far as I can go? Watching tasses is not as much of a thing in Super Metroid, especially this category. Uh, I will say with this. This route came out. It's based on an old TAS. Yeah. Uh, the the behemoth, you know, like M M K M K it was like M T M two K two. What is it? Metroid two thousand and two. Is that right? Metroid two thousand two. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, that's the site. Man, I found M two K two. That's the so, site. And there was like four four guys that you know secretly came up with this route. Uh, this modern route, but it was mm -hmm. based on like an old TAS. Weird. Because um, the new task does not get spazer, but the old one does. It's like a, a minor optimization. Getting kind of. Now I always thought spazer. I always thought spazer wasn't a more powerful weapon. It was just for. Uh, no, it's more powerful. Crazy. That's the reason you get it for this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering. Um. So you did that. You did that moonfall there. Once you landed on the planet, right? That's what we saw mm -hmm. when you you like moon. Okay. Cool. That's, that's the biggest time save. Uh, that's the biggest moonfall time save. It's like a four second uh, time save, and you cl like clip through a platform, like a, a very thin platform, because it doesn't trigger their doesn't trigger the collision detection. You know, because I think because you're going so fast, right? You're going so fast, so like the game only registers you. You know, every it doesn't register you at the point where you're supposed to collide with that. Now. Whenever you get new weapons, is it is it a stack on an actual percent, or does it is there any weapons that are like multipliers or anything? Like when you get the spazzer, is your damage increased by fifty percent, or does the spazzer just add on X amount of damage? The game just has like I think it just has like a set sort of damage outputs for every sort of beam combination that you can have. Crazy. But yeah, every every beam does add a certain amount of damage. So when you know when you have when I fight Ridley and Mother Brain, I have four beams that have charge, ice, spazer, and wave, and they all add damage. Yeah. But it's not if like you if skip... you get... What's that? Yeah, if you if you skip spazer, you'll be doing that much less damage where it's like... It's worth it to get spazer because the time you lose getting spazer is like 23 seconds. 
is made up by the, the extra damage that you do for Ridley and Mother Brain. Yeah. Okay. So it's like it's essentially only... efficient in the long run, anyways, because you're you're doing especially with the way you fight Ridley as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, now how impossible it has to do with the. It, it has to do with this route to like, um, I'm trying to think how to phrase this. Like, Ridley... take your time. We, you we can't, got you awesome can't, you, here. You can't get plasma because you're not going to Meridia. You're going to Ridley before you go to Meridia, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you can't have plasma for Ridley. Nope. So you're not going to have that huge damage beam, and that's kind of why Spazer is worth it because it. You, it gets used on Ridley and Mother Brain. You know, you get that extra damage for both of those fights. Now, the reason you don't get Plasma first is because just strictly routing, right? Direction? Just routing. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the big time save is not so much Fantune first. It's not really where you save the time. Uh, just because you have Gravity Suit, you can do all of Norfair in one go. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where the real time save is. Instead of going down into Upper Norfair and getting Speed Booster and Wave Beam and then coming out of, you know, taking the elevator out of Norfair... And then going to Meridia or whatever. Or which is to... which is also very old as well. I remember having, whenever I used to play this, you would do the sunken ship after you get Wave Beam. Which mm -hmm. is just so counterintuitive. It's useless, right? It's... Well, I mean, that's the way the game was designed. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's just, for routing sakes, it's definitely way less efficient to do Norfair twice. You know, you wanted to do it all in one go. So everything that you displayed so far, other than the Moonfall, has been pretty standard tech. Impressive tech, definitely. Like, the average player wouldn't be able to climb walls as easy, or go up that sure. ball form. But here's the first actual trick that was discovered and named, and it was called the Mock Ball, right? I don't know, like, the... I don't know if it was the first trick discovered, right. but this is, like, a huge... No, no, I mean, this uh, is the first trick that, right. Yeah, this is the first trick you're doing that's, like, an actual discovered trick with a name and everything. Not the first trick discovered, no. Right, right, right. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's called the Mock Ball, right? And I, I would call it the first major sequence break, because this is like a Spore Spawn skip. Yeah. You skip the... a mini-boss by being able to get the, the Super Missiles here, because otherwise you're intended to get Super Missiles by defeating Spore Spawn. Now, then... are you naturally supposed to be able to ball, ball form with that amount of speed? No. No. Unless right. you, like, do some weird Shine Spark. So you... Well... To keep your speed in ball form, you have to uh, you have to run and jump, and you have to keep your momentum. There's ways you can lose your momentum in the air if you press the wrong sort of combination of buttons. So you, you have to avoid doing certain things. You have to aim down, and then right before you hit the ground, you have to morph morph ball. You know, you have to do what's called a soft morph, so you can't bounce on the ground. You know, but it's you have to morph. You have to morph right when you hit the ground and do sort of like a Hadouken motion, like a circle forward. Yeah. Yeah. Or it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be a core circle forward, but you have to immediately press forward to keep that momentum as well. But it's also it's not kind of, frame perfect either, right? It's not like the most impossible not at thing all. ever. It's pretty easy. Yeah. Not at all. Okay. Cool. I mean, once you know, it's the mechanics of this game are pretty involved, but yeah, it's not like that precise of a trick. If you do like really tight, short mock balls, or like you try to mock ball into like a, a tunnel that's kind of awkward to mock ball into, it can be very hard. But most mock balls are pretty easy. Now, now the climb you just did there, like mm -hmm. that one, that's not a very like that's not overly difficult. But with the route you're going, it makes it harder because of like less health and the direction you need to go after this. Um, yeah, and were this... you happy or sad when you guys finally started to include that in the run? Because that climb can just be um, a bitch sometimes. Honestly, you the guys climb, nail I... it. Yeah, the climb's not a big deal. I mean, the real reset, res... uh, the real reset points are the moat and Fantoon, for sure. Okay, but and then the you know, the... coming up for anyone wondering. Yeah, the moat is the real sort of pain in the ass that this route introduces into the category. Okay. Uh, Fantoon is kind of a pain in the ass either way. You get to fight him earlier this this way, which is kind of good. See, that's good. Re but... your, so your reset rate is roughly uh, 10 and a half to 11 minutes, right? That's your biggest reset, you'd say? Absolutely, yeah. Now, hold Fantune on, hold on. Is... I've, always, I've always had this question, okay? When you get the okay. expansion, I, I don't know if you're going to do it here. You jump, you get the expansion. I will. Do you press left really quick to get a wall jump, or are you just jumping really fast, keeping momentum? 
you just hold right and you have a two frame window to hit a wall jump. It is a wall jump off the back side of the But you're uh, not pressing dismissal. left to wall jump off of it, right? No, you're just holding right the Oh that that trick is really simple. It's just very precise. It's one of the few like frame tricks in the game that's okay. required. I've always wondered, I'm so like, it's... is he holding left and jumping or is he still jumping on the flat ground but not losing speed? It's the anybody can do that trick. They just have to all you have to do is like hump the door, right? before it opens yeah and then hold right and dash and you jump the last frame before you fall in the water and then you have a two frame window to jump off the back of the missile pedestal nice that's pretty crazy mm -hmm. so you doing this you gotta turn the power back on but here it is so you're gonna have to explain Anything. to everyone your references for fast fast uh mid mid slow slow you know the you don't have to well, explain all the variants it's just pretty much what i asked the other day like how it works yeah uh, Fantune has basically six patterns. I mean, you can do fast, mid, slow for each round. So you get a fast right, which is pretty darn optimal because you don't even have to wait for Fantune. Like, if you get a fast left, you have to wait for Fantune to go all the way off the screen to sort of set up your missile Doppler. Mm -hmm. And Dopplering is where you, like, you shoot a bunch of missiles into Fantune. Normally, Fantune will disappear before you can shoot this many missiles into Fantune. So, uh... Damn. Yeah, that was fast mid there. Okay, so what he means by fast is that uh, it was... It was fast when he was allowed to attack, right? It's all about dealing enough right. damage in the cycles he does. He does two cycles, or in some cases, like three and four, right? Uh, if, a if record now will have two cycles, probably. Yeah, yeah. But, like, if it's your no first playthrough what. and you're a noob and you're not killing him or anything, he's going to do, like, a billion cycles in all of the places. Four or five, at least, yeah. yeah. So a mid means that Fantoon didn't let him attack him until, you know, slower than a faster version of that. So that's what those essentially mean. Correct. Fantoon is invulnerable for a certain period of time. Nice. And uh, compared to a fast, you lose like six seconds or five or six seconds for a mid pattern and like 11 for a slow pattern. So uh, that was a really good pattern, you know, mid fast, but I mm -hmm. still lost five or six seconds compared to a really optimal fight. Would you say you get a fast fast at least once a day? No. Ouch. Yeah, it's just one of those things. It's a one in 16 chance. So like, Sometimes I'll see it twice a day, and sometimes I won't see it for two days. You exactly. know, it's one of those things. It seems like one of those things, like, even knowing the odds don't help you. It's not like, oh, I should get it soon because I haven't gotten a while. It doesn't really work that way, right? No. Like, you could get right. it two times that's... in a row and then not get it for a week. It's like the gambler's... It's like a logical fallacy, the gambler's <laughs> right. fallacy. You know, where they're like, well, I'm, I, have been luck I have been unlucky for the last day, so I'm going to be lucky today. It doesn't yeah. work like that. That's not the way statistics works you know? well, would you say it was one in 16 so on your 16th attempt should be the right one yes you know? should be it blackjack right there baby right, <laughs> right on okay so this is uh essentially the big cut scene um is this guitar moment mm, i don't know sometimes i do sometimes i don't <laughs> so yeah this is this leads you to get the um um I'm what suit is it called Gravity. The gravity suit. Yeah, I knew that, guys. I knew that. Yeah, this is a really good pace, so I was probably just sort of concentrating on the run. Right on, yeah. This looks this looks really good, too. You were talking about, like, coming up to the wrecked ship being kind of a pain. Like, a lot of this, you'll see a lot of energy management. Like, I had to have a certain amount of energy to get through that spike room, and you want a certain amount of energy to fight Fantoon and not die. Yeah. Like, uh... Even rockets, kind of right? Yeah, ammo management becomes a huge deal here. Um, for Ridley, I mean, you're thinking about Ridley from the point you defeat Fantoon and get those drops. You're kind of sort of calculating in your head what kind of ammo you need. Because mm -hmm. Ridley, it's, it's really paramount to have as many supers as possible for Ridley. It saves... You lose a lot of time if you don't have nearly full or full supers for Ridley. Cool. And, uh, you know, you need the power bombs just to access areas, right? Yeah. Or you for need... the X-Factors on Ridley, you know? So what is X-Factoring? Because that doesn't seem like a... When I first played through this game, I didn't know that those super powerful weapons existed using power bombs. Mm -hmm. So, like, so how do you do them? Uh, it's called a special beam attack, I think. But, yeah. uh, anyway, you just have to select power bombs, and you have to have... Only charge beam and one other beam selected. So, you know, ice beam has like a little ice shield and it's used. That's so cryptic uh, for like a special weapon, right? Like, 
You mm -hmm. need like the strategy guide to know to do that. It's not anywhere in Pretty the game. Pretty much. Right? Well, it, it is shown in the attract mode in the game, you know, like the demo. Yeah, yeah, nope. definitely. They do show it mm -hmm. in in that, so you know, they, I, I'm sure they had it. In, I'm sure they had it in the manual or something. Yeah, they do their typical cryptic Metroid stuff. If you watch the, oh, intro, I love it, dude. I love. Yeah, I'm sure they. Yeah, they don't. They don't go out of their way to ex to slow down and explain stuff to you or hold your hand. It's pretty awesome. But yeah, I'm sure it was in the manual or whatever how to do it. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, X Factor is the wave beam plus charge beam attack. And that does the and, most uh, damage to Ridley with what you have? Absolutely. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, each particle, it does, like, it has four particles. Each particle does the same as, well, it does 300 damage per particle. So you want to um, hit eat all four of them for sure, then. Very Absolutely, important. yeah. So um, it's, e like, each particle is equal to a charge shot, and charge shots take exactly one second to charge up. Uh, now the problem is you have to unpause and take off two of your beams and then, you know, pause again and then put your beams back on for the rest, rest of the fight. But if you get three or four X factors in, it's worth it. In my opinion, yeah. you know, there's been a debate about it in the community, you know, did, did it rise the... a lot of debate because that's beneficial for in-game time? Cause timer stops it's, when you go to that pause, right? It's absolutely beneficial to in-game timer. But, um, as far as we can tell, like, Two cat and me tested it. Um, you know, Snick the Tasser, he's done a lot for the game. He thought that uh that's you know, it wasn't faster, but as far as we can tell, you know, just by like a human doing charge shots versus a human doing X Factors, it's like three or four seconds faster. So for certain uh, speedrunners, like even if something's not faster, that doesn't mean you can't do it because it might end up just being the same amount of time, even if it's more stressful, so certain things like that but in this case it is slightly faster for you guys to do it mm -hmm. maybe some tasters don't see certain things as even being worth it right some things are a little stressful than others well i yeah i don't know what the what happened there or <laughs> where the mix-up was but you know a human can't a human can't do perfect charge shots i think he accounted for that in some way but there's other there's other things that are more subtle that, that are going on in the ridley fight like ridley Right. Uh, Ridley, after Ridley gets below 75% health, Ridley will start swooping. But before that, Ridley will only pogo. So if Ridley's only pogoing, you, it's, you know, you're going to probably take damage a lot of the times mm -hmm. when you're trying to run run under. If And if you ball, if you straight ball under Ridley's tail, then you're going to lose time with your charge. You won't be charging your beam, right? Exactly, yeah. So it's all so about you, you, just those constant hits and charging. Uh, you You're able to get to that you know, swoop phase a lot faster that way. So when did this room be deemed not worth ball forming down under? When mm, it's pretty recent. That was uh, gonna say, the I fastest thought... the fastest strat is to ball form, but you need to like you need to mock ball on top of one of those like red enemies crawling on the ground and it's like super precise and it depends on RNG. It's just annoying. You know, like how the how the enemies move, like mm -hmm. uh that is the fastest, but it's so rare. I, I used to go for it. It's so rare to get a run. So most uh, enemies are in the same spot all the time, but it also depends on when they're loaded on the screen as well, right? So they, they have their uh, normal loading zone, and then whenever you move in? Or how does that work? Um, some enemies move off screen, some some don't. As far as that RNG I'm talking about, it's the, the enemies that are hopping up and down. Uh, like, if one of them hops high or you know the wrong way, you can't do that trick. You know that strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and another hidden thing about that strategy is you don't take any damage, so you kind of you have a better chance of forcing regular missiles at this farm point that I just. I was going to say at. an amazing run. Would you not have to stop and farm there, or is that always a stop and farm point? Does everyone? Uh, if it was amazing enough, yeah, you could maybe skip it, but. Oh, you'd have to have such good drops. <laughs> right? Um, you'd have to have godlike drops to skip that completely. But you could, I mean, theoretically, yeah. That expansion, I see you go for that sometimes, and then you don't go for it. Is it all because of how much ammo you have? So, uh, right before you get to charge beam, there's a missile pack that I usually get. Mm -hmm. About six minutes into the run. Uh, there's two random drops before that, and by random I mean they can... It's an enemy that can drop like a, an assortment of items. 
Um, and both of those two random drops have kind of a sort of low percent, maybe 20, 25% chance of dropping a regular missile. Man. If I get two regular missile drops from those two random drops before charge, charge beam, I will skip that missile pack. It's like two seconds faster. But the you know you you run a much higher risk of running out of missiles for Fantoon and yeah. just have, having to reset. But it is like technically faster to to get wave beam uh, missiles, the ones before wave beam instead of the charge beam. That's some of the beauty of speedrunning. Like on the fly decision making makes it so much more fun as well. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that's I love that trick so much. Do you yep. have a favorite trick in this game? Uh. Mm, probably something for 100 percent like so yeah maybe something maybe weird. maybe x-ray room spark in 100 percent or something like that <laughs> i don't know i don't know the trick you did there is so cool man i don't know <laughs> yeah like, that's a good one that yeah, one's actually been around for a long time yeah that's uh i've i tried i tried to go for that trick in uh some really old low percent speed speed runs like four years ago Crazy. But I'm obviously way better at it now. But... This room's cool. Boom. See ya. Like, I'm out. Mm -hmm. you just right through it all. This room? I think it's this. Yeah, I hate this room. It just feels so slow and clunky. Yeah. It's all laggy and... It's... If you... It's, this is a weird room. Like, Wee! let's see That's if I, cool. a lag. Yeah. See that lag at the end? If you lay the power bombs barely higher when you, you know, lay the power bomb in that room, you won't lag at the, like the whole room won't lag. It, it makes no sense whatsoever to me. Yeah, it's... It affects the whole room. I feel like closing my eyes when you get to that part, just for the sake of it. There's a lot of hidden details in this run that people might not pick up on, though, like that. So how much damage does that Shine Spark Exo Skeleton thingy do? Like, what what is it called? What do you call it? The Echoes? The, sh the Shine Spark Yeah, echoes? the Echoes. Do they I do mean, the same like amount? A, it's just like a... As the Shine Spark... I'm not sure. It's, I mean, basically anything that it's affected by, except for Dragon. Uh, you know, Dragon is affected by Shine Sparks, but mm -hmm. any like normal enemy is just going to immediately die to. If it's vulnerable to it, it's going to immediately die. It does like, you know, four thousand per frame for Shine yeah. Spark or something like. You know, it's like a ridiculous amount. You didn't look. You see the echoes used here. Do you so use that like... TV as your visual cue? That TV. Absolutely. And then this TV. Look at yep, that. That's. Yep. Yep. TV's. The TV mount. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, that's so, so cool. Because you get damage, can you not keep it there? Keep keep what? The, the ball speed from the Shine Spark? Oh, from the Speed Booster? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't really mock ball down there, though. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's why I, I always wondered, because you... Here it is. Okay, I'm going to be quiet and let you do whatever talking you need to. Here's the X-Factors. So I don't. I'm guessing I get four X factors here. And yeah, this is a setup I came up with. I mean, Cop, Cop Power has done five X factor Ridley, but I've never found like a really consistent way to do it. But if you could consistently do five, that'd be obviously even better. Is it because after you do four, he's doing the swoop and the pogo? Yeah, it's just there's already some RNG as far as like if Ridley will cooperate enough to do four X factors. So you know. Oh. You know, You're behemoth doesn't right here too, right? How many each two shots you do? So I know exactly if I get four X factors, I know that I need. If I've got ten supers and I get four X factors, I know I need twenty-two charge shots. You know, if I get three X factors, I know I need twenty-six charge shots. Uh, two, it'd be thirty. If I've got nine supers, it'd be twenty-four, twenty-eight, thirty-two, respectively. Oh, so yeah. here you're happy. You killed them fast there, then. Well, Ridley exploded without grabbing me, and it was really strange here. Like, I did not... <laughs> uh, we figured out a way. Since this run, we figured out how to do that on command. Uh, it's not really the optimal strat, but I got really lucky that it happened here because I wasn't trying to do it. And you need, like, a very specific sort yeah. of movement to make Ridley just spontaneously explode like that. I mean, Ridley had no health, but you usually have to end the fight with a grab. Oh Make yeah, I'm definitely familiar with that. That's weird. Mm -hmm. So that's why I had made that face, because like, what? <laughs> yeah. I remember I miscounted on my shots. I think I hit really with like an extra charge shot, and I didn't know Ridley was dead, and Ridley just exploded, and I was like, shocked when it happened. <laughs> You're like, out of my way, Ridley. Okay, I got other things to do. 
and not just that, but the pace I was on, this pace right here is just uh, insane. So Because uh, Ridley, I killed Ridley at about 23.30 on the clock. Mm-hmm. And uh, before that, my fastest Ridley kill time was probably like 23.39. So this is eight or nine seconds faster than it had ever been done. God. So at this, this point, point, you're on pace for your personal goal. Yeah, I am, yeah. Dang. Mm-hmm. I can, I All the way not, to Kraid. I'm not looking so forward I, to seeing what happens that ruins that. <laughs> I wanna. I can't remember exactly what it is that happens that ruins it, really. Uh, yeah, it's it's funny. The, the two-frame faster record I got recently... Mm-hmm. It was 16 seconds behind at Kraid. Oh my gosh. It has that a, was the time um, save. It has an unbelievable... Late. Well, it has like a perfect Turian. Like the last eight minutes are just no execution mistakes at all. So what's that trick you do when, you, when you're you standing on like anything that breaks below your feet and then you like mm-hmm. zoom down fast? What are you doing there? So if you're in a turnaround animation, you keep your vertical momentum... <laughs> Of course, of course. Why uh, I even question it? <laughs> right. So you aim down because it gives you a little bit like more uh, of a. The timing's a little easier if you're aiming down the turnaround. I think the turnaround takes this slightly longer. Um, yeah, yeah. That's it. Oh, just keep your speed drops? going down. Cray drops are look pretty good. Well, okay. Oh, the cray drops are bad. Okay. On this run, I, I look at my ammo. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now are those the cray drops you can't see? But I mean, it doesn't matter. You, you have visuals of your weapons, which is good. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So when did um, falling there become faster? You guys always used to come at a ball form as you went through the gap, and then you'd run and jump. Uh, that's that's a strat that I, I don't I don't think anybody else does but me. Um, you talking about balling into Kraid's lair? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think anybody else does that because everybody's afraid of like accidentally triggering the elevator again because <laughs> i like immediate <laughs> i immediately like i immediately duck and then shoot the shoot the wall out but you know if you do it wrong you'll press down and trigger the elevator and go straight yeah. back down it's not good well that was a little time save you must have had there too you just you smash your head there when you had the shine spark to get that extra boost on the other side of the door Hmm. so i think i mean it's worth an explanation but i think the average person knows no, it's a not lot, a, it's but... not a it's not a shine spark if you just have blue the shine spark specifically. Oh yeah, you have yeah, to charge right, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So let's see what Kraid does here. Yeah. See, I got no ammo at all. All right. I got zero missiles, zero uh, supers. And now you're upset so, because you know it's like this is the run. Like, why? Like, how? How bad are the odds though for like weapon, weapons and missiles and stuff? Like, it doesn't. Every time you beat a boss, it looks like it, the room is just filled with like missiles mm-hmm. and supers and powers. Yep. So it's like I mean, you got super that's, unlucky there. That that seems like it was pretty darn unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> that's so lame. So yeah, a lot of people fixate on like the Fantune RNG, but stuff like this is huge too. Like Batuan drops, Kraid drops, even Ridley drops. Like it all, it's all like a cumulative thing, you know. Like well, you know, like what good is a fast fast if you take you know three minutes to kill Ridley, right? It's useless. Yeah. Well, I don't so, know like, exactly how long if, the battle is, but yeah. If you get a farm, like, a bunch of power bombs and a bunch of supers, even if you get a fast, fast fan tune, like, and you get zero drops, it's, it's like, not, you know, it's maybe as good as a fast mid or a, a mid-mid. It's still good, but, uh, you know, the whole the whole ammo management thing is just cumulative every, from fan tune all the way to, like, the end. Yeah. Like, every, every boss that you come to, like, you have to manage your ammo depending on what you get. And if you get really good drops, it can save you time, you know? But you, There's you a lot probably, of RNG points in this run. You'd probably say that the, the average bosses are pretty easy. Like, it's not like you when you get to a boss, you're stressing out, oh gosh, I don't know if I can beat him. <laughs> and you're well, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I'd say they're easy. Uh, <laughs> okay, for a speed run, I, really I guess they're a lot harder then, right? I mean, we, we've gotten pretty consistent with them. Um, you know, it's definitely, Fantoon is definitely not easy. Uh, I've gotten, pro- you know, if you're top tier, you're con- very consistent with t- Fantoon, but mm-hmm. nobody else is really that consistent with Fantoon, except for, like, top or, like, mid, very close to top tier runners. See, when I uh, used to play for Ridley, this game, mm-hmm. when I used to play this game, my problem with Fantoon was, I, like, I just didn't really understand how he worked. Like, and I, I didn't get it, so I couldn't ever really be good with him. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so beautiful. So, you know, Crate is obviously a pushover. Batuan should be <laughs> easy. Um, Dragon's actually very consistent now if you do it right, but it's it's a very stressful part of the run because it's so late in the run mm -hmm. if you're on, like, a really good pace. Um, but, like, the thing with all the boss fights in this, in this run, in this game, is they all require very different mm -hmm. strategies. Like, the, it's not, like, one strategy cures all in this game for bosses. Like, boom, every, boss, every three... Every fight is like a thing you have to learn, like a, this kind of convoluted dance you have to play with the boss, you know? There's no way out kind of thing. You just, you, you gotta learn it. Mm -hmm. Now, how come you destroy the right side energy things when you, when, like, is it because the, 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 they'll just shoot at you if you don't? Yeah, so when you're, when you're charging up the Shine Spark to, for the first round of Dragon, the Dragon fight, you don't want to get shot and, and like, knocked out of your charge you know yeah exactly because yeah, that'll, that'll ruin the whole fight you can leave them up and theoretically do this and save missile bag you know like some missiles but it's very very risky you know and again this is really late in the run if you're on pace like you don't want to you want this to be as consistent as possible exactly okay so, so oh, yeah yeah go go i have questions but you'll probably explain that okay so this is called spike suit uh, you take blue suit and you do like a double frame perfect on morph uh, jump input. Sometimes you get a two frame leeway. It just depends. And uh, you keep a shine spark and you can run this way. Like with blue suit, you'd be blue here, but you couldn't run. But with spike suit, you can run. You can grab the drops. I mean, you mainly do it to grab the drops and so you can just jump straight out. Because if oh you just God. have blue suit... If you just have blue suit and you grab the drops, you have to gravity jump out, which means you have to pause twice. It's way slower. Exactly, because you can't really do much. It's because you'll mm -hmm. untrigger it, right? Now, ideally, I <laughs> wouldn't want to so even... Sexy? Ideally, I wouldn't even want to do the spike suit, though. I would just want to bomb jump out with blue suit and skip the drops. But like I was saying with the you know the cumulative effect of ammo drops, Batuan gave me a, a really lackluster drop, so I needed all the the supers for Turian, you know, to get through Turian and get to Turian uh, at a good pace. Uh, now, did... Um, so I lost, like, three seconds because I had to get those drops. Which you wouldn't uh, have if Kraid wasn't an asshole either, right? If Kraid and Batuan gave me great drops, then I wouldn't... I would have saved three seconds there just on RNG. Uh, I think I might have gotten a bad pattern on Dragon 2. Dragon has one bad pattern that you kind of lose three seconds. So I might have lost, like, six seconds on How that. How much health does he have? You shine, you shine Spark through him two times right in the face. Mm -hmm. But that's uh, not even where I... you hit him, though. You're supposed to hit him in the belly. Why does Shine Sparking him in the face work? <sighs> <That's complicated. laughs> well, the Shine Spark doesn't really... You know, for Shine Sparking, it doesn't really matter where you hit Dragon. And Dragon's... Oh, okay, sp okay. Dragon sprite is sort of like triangular with the, one of the long bases on the top side, you know, like along the head. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you go, you go along more of the the hitbox of create of excuse me, Dragon by shine sparking high. Yeah. So you know, Dragon has six thousand health. You want to do like, you want to do like um, three thousand and. I mean, ideally, I think 3,450 damage in the first round with the X-Factor and the first um, Shine Spark. So you can do the two-spark um, fight. Yeah. It and used you, to be a three-spark. You do a couple charges, right, in there just to make sure. And a couple missiles you threw, you threw at him as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. That's to sort of ensure that you can do two-spark kill. It doesn't cost uh, any time. Why not, right? So we used to do, like, three-spark kill, but the two-sparks look way better such a such a better strategy because okay. not only do uh it's like completely consistent now if you if you don't mess up uh it's faster and you take less damage because you're shine sparking one less time it's, it's like in all in all ways it's just it's much a superior strat best cutscene of the game here too right yeah i like to i like to, like here i like to bomb jump and like you could like rest your hands here and do nothing but auto score man like, so I kind of like move, yeah. I kind of move around to keep my mind off overthinking things, or uh, you know, just keep my hands busy. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I you know what I'm talking about. Oh, definitely, definitely. I think Trihex mainly... has that the worst. He like does that while he's playing. It's crazy. Right. I think mainly for me, it's like to keep my mind, to keep from overthinking everything, and you know, 
Mm -hmm. We'll touch a little bit more base on that once the run's over. Okay. So we're, we're going we're gonna to group Metroids here. I'm going to... Okay, I didn't do my strat that I wanted to do there, but... Uh, you want to group them because uh, you save ammo doing that, right? Like, mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'd have to shoot each one individually. So if you group them up and uh, shoot them with the, all at one time with a missile, you can uh, save supers that way. And their drops are also important as well, right? Absolutely. This, That's why we go if, for them. If you get, if you, you know, you average like one super per Metroid, but they can just totally end the run, no matter how good it is. They can just flat out brick wall you, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah. They'll just keep giving you health after you've wasted yeah. all your missiles killing them. Mm hmm Now, I bet but it's you, not you as can't... bad as Metroid 1, though. Probably not. No, probably not. Metroid <laughs> 1's stupid. Okay, so... But, uh... Yeah, you you don't want to like slow down though to get extra drops on the way here because it's just so optimized. You can't afford to do that. You know you have to kind of yeah. Now is there nowhere in the run worth it to just maybe grab an extra super missile somewhere? No, that stinks. Not this worth it. is one of your most complicated tricks, right? Baby skip is a very subtle trick. The way you move, you know, like it looks easy enough. You just jump around, you know. But <laughs> like, if you try to if you try to do it, it's very like the baby's moving very fast, and it's and it's moving exactly according to what you're doing. So you have to know exactly how your movement will affect the baby's movement, and you have to know a, you know be really consistent with your setup, and everything just has to be very precise. Did you it's do not a quick like... moon drop there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, out the Insane. door. Yeah, it... yep. I just That's caught that. I was like, get... why did he face left and like be really low to the ground there? And I, for sure, I saw the speed. So you skip through the Zebatite wall there with a down back. Uh, you can do it with the spin jump. That's the way you used to do it. But you can kind of down back, which is another trick where you uh, you can fall forward while holding down. Uh, but anyway, the Zebatite skip, I'm, I'd take too long to explain everything. Just taking detail, damage is essential it. to it though, right? Uh, yeah, you have to Yeah, you have to be in an invulnerability state. There you and go. then okay. out. So you like you kind of land on top of the frozen ring that you freeze at the bottom of it, you know. Yeah. And you kind of it kind of inches you forward to where you're inside the wall, just barely, and you can just jump through the wall, and it doesn't spawn the rest of the walls. It seems like it's a mm -hmm. complicated generic wall clip, right? Mm -hmm. like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the Zebatite walls are classified, I think, by the game as enemies, and so it's like the same as like it's the same as like quote-unquote, like, not using the term correctly, glitching through an enemy, like, just running through an enemy with invulnerability frames. It's a little bit different, but... Dry frames, yeah. uh, that's, like, the biggest... And it's probably the biggest uh, sequence break in the game, though, because if you couldn't do that, Lord, you'd have to have so many missiles there. Like, you yeah, because so you need missiles missile to packs, shoot yeah. them to break it, yeah. The mm -hmm. run would be completely different if that wasn't possible. Yeah, it would be very different. Insane. So how many shots here? How many shots right to her face? 60 shots, and at 45, she does this red beam attack. You cannot get hit by the red beam at all. It'll no. do 100 damage. So I have to stay above 301 energy here. 301 or above. Yeah. Um, because when she attacks you with her head beam to get you super low, she will kill you if you're already too low, right? Absolutely, yeah. She won't stop. You know, it'll do a straight up 300 damage. So, you know, that's one of the things people ask. Well, I mean, every once in a while somebody will ask, you know, can you get less than that? Can you skip a tank? And it's like, nope. Now, sure I have, I have I a quick question while you're waiting here. And there, and so, an, oh, let me let me jump in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's another thing, like, people ask if you skip various suit. Why do you need various suit after you've got gravity suit? Well, that rainbow beam will do 600 damage if you don't have various and you need three more E-tanks. So you can either pick between three more E-tanks or Varia. So that's why we have to get Varia. That's the only yeah. reason. But that's, right. that's why we get Varia. And it's faster too, right? It's faster to get Varia than the three E-Tanks, yeah, for sure. What is this? A walk in the park, guys? Come on, this is serious speedrunning. We don't <laughs> screw around with all these energy tanks. No, I was gonna ask, I'm sorry, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was going to ask, uh, whenever you're charging uh, your your beam there, technically the less distance between the beam and the enemy, the faster it is, but you have to wait for the charge beam. So standing in the corner shooting isn't actually slower, right? No, because your, your charge timer is already going when the beam's in the air on the way to... By the brain. So you have to wait for your charge anyways, and you don't want a half charge because that's not as much damage, right? 
No, you just don't get any damage if you don't charge it fully. There you go. It's, so you, so you don't want to just... stand right in her face and shoot. That's not really not going to help you. The only way that getting closer to Mother Brain will help, and it does help for this last phase of the fight, you do stand a little closer. Like, you could stand in the corner and just straight up shoot up top, you know, and keep diagonally up left. That, yeah. But, yeah, lag is like a huge issue here. A hyper uh, suit, too, you get one, you get, you get to keep. Yeah, you don't have to wait yeah. for any charges, yeah. So if you're in the corner, like it'll lag way worse than it is right now. So this is why I get closer to Ridley or closer to Mother Brain here. And this sometimes not the most stressful thing, man, when you're on pace, you miss like three no. shots. You're losing a little bit of time every time, though, right? Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it was stressful in these last two runs because I was so like I knew I needed a good Mother Brain three. I needed a good escape. Um. So yeah, this this part actually was pretty stressful. You can't lose too much time on this fight, but yeah. Sure. If you're this close to, like, you know, I'm negative 0.8, so I'm like, I know I've got to clutch out a really good run here to actually oh, get the ass. record. Look at that leg. Mm -hmm. That was disgusting leg at the start there. Mm -hmm. So Does that the first room, like... cost a lot of leg? Is that why? Well, the first room, it was actually, like, there's a lag reduction strat that was in play there. So the first shot cleared the first, like, set of barriers that were coming down. And, like, I paused. I didn't shoot for, like, uh, maybe half a second, and then I shot again. You know, we used to just shoot straight down left twice in a row. It lags more. You can shoot it earlier, but it lags more. So if you delay that second shot, it, it lags less. Yeah, and we just got to see yeah. the moonwalk there. So here, I'm gonna not shoot these these enemies. I did shoot. I, was, I guess I was afraid I didn't get enough uh, run speed. But if you don't shoot there, you save a little bit of lag too. You there's a, there's so many lag reduction strats in this. Well, look at the run. game, right? It's like at its maximum mm -hmm. a simple steam of smoke here can ruin your run right yep i think i got an actual a really lucky ending here like i didn't get hit by speed steam at all <laughs> nice dude and i all think right. i watched a video where you lost the record run because you didn't go down in samus's ship fast enough there yeah like you I'm thought sure you went I know down I've done it. oh my mm -hmm. gosh that would suck so much oh yeah, my that last God. The ship room was really quick because uh, usually you get hit by steam in the last room there, so <laughs> I did not expect that. So that gave you that little extra boost. Is that what brought you from a point eight to a one point one? Just getting lucky and not having the yeah, that, leg reductions. Well, the the steam luck at the end definitely definitely gave me that extra second. You know, it. it I mean, it would probably have been a forty one twenty four maybe. I don't know if it would actually beaten the the old record if it if I would have gotten steamed at the end. So yeah, it definitely took it from twenty four to twenty three for sure. Damn, dude, that's insane. Oh, we got the Zosty plane. So uh, because we don't need the double commentary, I'm just gonna fast forward. I'm just gonna go to the the start of the run here, and then we can just kind of like talk about a couple things. Okay. One of the things I did want to ask though, like, at what point in that run? Like, I know you were saving a lot of time, and it, and it seemed like this run was pretty stressful from the get-go as soon as you started saving those good amounts of time. But what do you think the turning point was where it was like, okay, I really need to concentrate. Don't screw me over mind. Like, you tried to stay as focused as possible. When does that hit me? Yeah, when did that hit you in this run where you were like, okay, this is super mm. serious right now? Probably uh, around Gravity Suit, probably. Gravity I think suit. people are. I, th I think actually the chat was asking me a bunch of questions in this around gravity suit. And I was like, you know, it's not a problem that you are asking questions, but I'm I'm just going to concentrate on this run right now. Yeah, there's 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 yeah. runs where you can watch and read chat, and you know, chat helps you keep your mind off things. But this in, this run in particular, you're like, you'll you'll look over and read chat, but you just won't respond, right? Because talking will I can't... you up and all this random stuff. Yeah, I, could, I didn't want to field like constant questions at at that point, like mm -hmm. one or you know here and there maybe. But some runners actually turn the monitor off or close chat. Do you ever do that, or are you pretty good with self control? Like you can look at chat, and what everyone's saying isn't really gonna control or dictate how your run's gonna play out. It hasn't. I've had some really. I mean, I've had some really good late games lately, so it hasn't. It hasn't been an issue at all. No. I have done that before. I have done that before though. Um, like, where I hide my splits and uh, turn off the monitor that has my splits on it and stuff like that. Yeah, it helps, so, right? I mean, if it helps, then why not do it, yeah. right? But, you know, I kind of, 
I'm kind of the mindset that if you're at this level, you you kind of know if your run's going really, really well, and you're going to get nervous anyway. Yeah. Do you, know, you think you, kinda... you would be able to determine certain times, even if you never had a timer to begin with? Like, if you just started playing and you got through yeah. your run, you knew things were would be working out and not working out almost mm -hmm. down to a T. Not perfectly, obviously, but you know when you get certain yeah. drops, how it's going, and certain boss battles. That's so cool. I mean, if I did a run without a timer, I could probably guess within 20 seconds what my time was, I'd say. So, like, GDQ. 15, 20 seconds. Yeah. Just like GDQs, mm -hmm. you're, you you know, like, whenever they say your time, you're like, yeah, I knew it was probably pretty close to that. Right, Every yeah. Every time. That's, like, one of the rare runs at GDQs where you don't actually know your times. I mean, when you're at home, mm -hmm. what's, there's no reason to not know your time. Right. Yeah. So, like... No, I mean... No, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, is there, is, there, is there any, like, trick in this run that you just hate the most? Like, when you think about playing this game... Is there a trick where you're like, like I just wish that trick wasn't in this game, or is it RNG for you? Um, probably just having, you know, playing the early game so much is the the main sort of annoying thing about doing this run. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed this. I really enjoy this category, but you know, if you get in kind of stuck in a loop of playing the first ten minutes over and over again because of Fantune or the moat, it can be, you know, a little annoying. Ridley can be kind of a pain in the dick too, so. But the thing with Ridley is that at least you got to Ridley, kind of thing, right? Like you can't complain because at least you know you played for more than ten minutes. Right. Not much more than ten minutes, but you played a little bit more than ten minutes. Yeah, but there's not there's not really a trick that. You know, that's good though. I that's good. Despise or anything. Yeah. That's good. Well, that's the thing I like about this game. This game, it doesn't have any frame perfect tricks to determine your run. You know, like it has the CWJ. You know, going across the moat, the mm. the continue the continuous wall jump. That's really the only frame trick that I guess like spike suit, but it's very low on frame perfect tricks that determine how good your run, like that make a huge impact on your run. But it's They're not like, like do, it's... do or die. It's more like <laughs> it's more like complex series of inputs. You know, like it's like but you find that stuff fun, right? I think that's more fun that way. Yeah. See, and it, it also extends your skill you know and your ability to play which also is another factor of fun a lot of people you know you get a lot of youtube comments or even like other other things that have been on like tv and, and people don't understand like well why do you need to play so fast like what's so great about that you know but that's just exactly what makes it fun right you're playing so you're pushing to another level of playing ability right so sure all these frame perfect stuff is just so much fun that's that's what i enjoy about speedrunning. And, of course, you love the game, right? Did you grow up exactly. as a kid playing this game? Nope. nope. I didn't play it until f four or five years ago. All right. Uh, and you just... I just I just loved it. I mean, I, I've always been a huge fan of 2D. I'm really not even a Metroid fanboy at, at all. Um, I just really loved this game. I watched the speedrun. One of my friends gave me the game about five years ago. And uh, I watched the... I watched Hoda Ruby's run on Speed Demo's archives and... Is this a really flashy run? And you know, like I said, I'm a huge fan of 2D games. Mm -hmm. And this, as a any, you know, this is one of the most, as far as the mechanics of the game, this is easily one of the most in-depth, old-school 2D platformers that there is. I'd say one of the longest standing too. It's still going. It was one of the first mm -hmm. on Metroid 2002 and on Speed Demos. Speed Demos started with mm -hmm. Metroids and Dooms and. Yeah, it's pretty close to it, right? Not not even Goldeneye was really up there at the time. I know it was really early. I don't know the whole history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, the other thing I want to say is that whenever you're speedrunning, now obviously we all know that you like play music. Do you treat your controller like an instrument as well? Does it feel more like an instrument to you? Like, do you do you relate to it like that, or is it something completely different? I never really thought about it that way. Uh, I definitely think about it in terms of, you know, I think as a musician, you like, you're used to, you're used to knowing that if you put time into something that like your muscle memory, muscle memory will develop gradually in ways that you, you wouldn't even, things that seem impossible at first, like you, you might be able to do them, you know, like playing, sight reading a piano piece just seems like wizardry if you're beginner pianist 
but it's yeah. something you just have to work up to gradually and gradually until you you can just second nature you know exactly and it like, just so like... having having that sort of outlook on it i think is very beneficial and just obviously you know a musician probably has good timing and good manual dexterity and stuff like that so well, do you ever try and take your controller to like the next level? Like use different fingers for di different, like like strats, like controller strats. Do you ever try and do stuff like that, or is Super Metroid in, in such a way where like you have to? No, no. The, I mean, Behemoth has a really weird uh, <laughs> controller config, and you know, there's a lot of there's a many different controller configs that people use. Um, I can never get even, a comfortable one. It's just, I feel like there's just one button missing to make it perfect kind of thing. Right. It's the item so, swap and canceling, I think. So to, to address your question a little bit more directly, I think um, for my particular configuration, like most of the time I'll just use a fat finger. Like I'll use my thumb mainly on the right hand. Mm -hmm. But but uh, I also will claw to hit X when I need to hit X sometimes. Sometimes I won't. I don't have to use the claw. And then sometimes I'll I'll like... What I what I call is a piano grip, where I I uh, hold my hand as if I'm holding like an arcade joystick. Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yep. So yeah. I can. So my index finger will be on select, and yeah, then like, wait, of... wait, is that right? My index finger will be on select. My thumb is on B. My my uh, middle finger is on Y. My <laughs> my ring finger is on X, and then my pinky is on A. So I can cover all five of those buttons. Yeah. With, uh, now that's a rare case, though. That's certain tricks or something. Yeah, certain rooms is it's it's not used that often. But if I need to if I need to use select, in, in a sort of fluid way, and, and all the button all the other face buttons at the same time, I'll use that sort of grip. <laughs> so what you're saying is you um, don't do that for Fantoon. I do sort of do that for Fantoon to switch to the super at the end, like I'll. But it's yeah. not like a full it's not like a full on piano grip. Yeah. It's mainly just because like. Holding my hand upright like that makes it easier to switch between the the missiles and the and the super missile because X is my item switch, so I'm like Y Y Y Y X Y at the That's end, so you know. Cool. And it's easier to do that, um, you know, with with your hand like that. And it, I'm kind of dumb, so uh, I hold my controller upside, I hold my controller upside down for Kraid. Uh, I have a really weird grip that I use from Mother Brain. It's really strange where I use my left thumb to hit jump. Like, it's... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think I, your I, music background translates into that. I think having the ability to uh, use your... Con you're pretty much using your controller as an instrument at that point. Because you're just using it in, the, in these different ways to create different outcomes, right? You have to... Sure. You, you change your controller to get... To, to do something different in the game, so I think it's really. It's cool. like you said. Uh, it's like you said. It, it seems like one button's always missing. Well, you have to adapt, like the way you play, to cover all that ground. You know, mm -hmm. that's sort of, that's sort of the way you you adapt to to make no, up no, for that. Exactly. Yeah. Because I would have to claw with my with my first finger on my right hand uh, over like the X and stuff like that for switching and stuff and. And even if you claw like hitting select is a problem if you need to hold the d-pad and you know mm -hmm. hit face buttons at the same time and then press select at the same time you got all that going on yeah because i always want l and r to be aim up and down always so then shoots a different mm -hmm. button but i'm so used to mario so i want b to be run and or x to be run and a to be jump it's a headache for me right it's a, <laughs> yeah it's you, a just, headache. you just gotta get you just gotta figure out what what works for you and like i didn't look up anybody's i, I didn't look at anybody's configuration no. when i came up when I came up with my configuration, it was before I started speedrunning for us in the community. I don't think so I'd ever I've, be I've able to copy game. someone's configuration. Even if it was the right mm -hmm. one for me, I think I would end up discovering it on my own, right? Because you right. just go with what your what your guts kind of just kind of just sat down and looked at it and said, mm, "I don't <laughs> want to do this," and then I ran with it, you know, and it worked out really well. Apparently, <laughs> you got like graph paper and numbers chart, and you just like <laughs> well, you know, not your really. controller put like X and Y coordinates. <laughs> No, I just did it in my head. You know, I just thought about it in my head for a while, and I was like, mm. "Of course." I mean, because the the game won't let you, like you said, the game won't let you map L and R to. I would have probably if I, if the game would let you map L or R to run, and then like still allow you to have angle up or down on one of the other buttons. Mm -hmm. I would probably have. I probably would have done that. But if you map, you know, if you map L or R to run, you lose. You straight up lose angle up or angle down. 
you can't you can't assign it to a a, a face button basically that's so insane though it's good that you've you've found your own comfort zone for it i mean that's amazing but i mean aside from that when it comes to speedrunning, like what is what does speedrunning mean to you? I don't think I've really seen you speedrun any other games. If anything, I would have caught you maybe casually playing something if you're ever bored. But I'm, I don't think I've seen that. So is is speedrunning a huge thing, or is it just strictly Super Metroid? What up? Love this speedrunning it, and that's all for speedrunning for you. That's it. I wouldn't say that's all speedrunning for me. I mean, nice. it's more ca- it's 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 more casual with other games, especially so far. I, I don't know. I don't think there's any way I could put this much. I mean, I put in an ungodly amount of time in a Super Metroid. Oh, of course, uh, years. We're not even talking like hours. We're talking years. Right? We're talking about four or five years. Like, there's no way I could ever. I don't think there's any way I could spend this much time with a speedrun again no but have you casually uh, done speedruns of other games am i just dumb have i just oh, yeah. missed it before like do you stream absolutely it or am i ridiculous i haven't and it's been a while okay but yeah i haven't i've got like a sub 130 uh, link to the past i've got nice. a 129 link to the past i've got like a couple of doom runs i've got ninja guide one like 13 something nice. or maybe 12 something but like you said um i've got i've got a lot of i mean uh I was pretty good at Symphony of the Night. Uh, I played that. I speed ran that before this, actually, uh, for good, a little man. while. Uh, so game. I've got. I was really good at Richter speed runs. Um, I've done quite a few speed runs. Like I did Alien Soldier at uh, GDQ. That was the only other GDQ run I've done. Nice. It's a it's a Genesis game. A very, very awesome game. If you've not seen it, I definitely no, I recommend haven't. it. I'll probably message you about that after and take a look at it. It was a Japan only game. Um, course yeah and treasure made it i don't know if you're familiar with treasure Mm-mm. the developer but it's it's an insane genesis game it's really cool and i just got a sega genesis too look at that i'm excited uh, you probably want a, an ever drive to play that one though because it's super expensive it's a cart okay okay but to get the jet ja- the japanese cards like two or three hundred dollars okay well i got yeah. i have some research to do let's put it that way i've got some stuff to do i got work you should definitely that, that game you should definitely play it but you will be frustrated at first because the controls are the controls are are good but they're not like anything you've played it's not it doesn't control like anything you've played before mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's definitely exciting though see see like a lot of people hated uh resident evils because the way it controlled i like those controls you know i like different controls so maybe we'll see we'll see how it goes right on so i guess with one of the last questions that i have unless you want to fill in uh for anyone wanting to get into speedrunning do you have any like crucial advice for them i like to ask this with everyone that like i talk to like about their runs to try and see if there's different advice that other people can give about speedrunning or or anything that you can say so people don't get so discouraged because i don't know about you but when i stream Sometimes I can get a lot of people coming in and they're like, I just don't understand it. Like, I try so hard and I can't do it the way, like, you guys do it or anything like that, so. Um, I think some people expect results too quick and don't have enough patience. <laughs> uh, you have you have to be patient. If I mean, if you want to get, it depends on your goal, of course. Of course, if yeah. You, if you want to get to top tier at a, at a highly contested, you know, a relatively highly contested game, you know, you're going to have to put a lot of time into it at this point. Do you think um, there's gamers out do, there that y- don't have what it takes to get to that point? Or do you think everyone has maybe, an equal opportunity? I, or? I mean, I think, I think, uh, I think most things are a combination of, um, talent and, uh, you know, the time you put into something. I, I think course. there's a combo going on. Like speed running is a little bit more deterministic to where like, I'd say most people can get to a really high level at a game if they really want to. Well, I right it, now, I think it requires gonna... some amazing talent. I don't think you have anything crazy, but yeah, I, I mean, think I... I think it's definitely a factor. You know, I, well, I like to mention just... that a lot of strats are. Luckily for people, a lot of strats are already laid out for them. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's... I think I think having the the right mindset is like huge. Like, so if somebody just doesn't have the right mindset, or they can't get in the right mindset of how to approach practicing yeah. i mean if you want to get good you have to practice you know pra- perfect practice makes perfect it, it, you have to be able to identify what you're doing wrong exactly you have to have the patience to like slow down and say what is it that's 
you know, what, why are my hands not moving the way they're supposed to? You have to really break things down a lot, you know? Execution, process of elimination, all that stuff, right? Yeah, you can't just... Uh, you can't just uh, keep hammering on something and expect it to to fix itself. You know, you have to you have to really diagnose problems a lot of times, whether it be with your hands or with what the game's giving you, or whatever it may be. Yeah, like if a, if a strat just doesn't keep like working, like if you keep trying it over and over again and it never works, okay, something's wrong, right? Mm -hmm. then that's when you got to break it down and take a look at it. But I, I, you know, I guess another thing I'd say is. You know, if you don't do it for fun, if if you don't really enjoy doing it, you'll burn out probably. Mm -hmm. I so, agree. I, I, you know, people are like, I want to, I want to, I want a partner channel, and like, <laughs> you know, well, I want to be a speedrunner with this huge partner channel. It's like getting ahead of yourself. Do you enjoy? It? You know, you really have to enjoy it. To well, stick exactly. With it to I mean, it. I've seen people grind it out for like a couple months. They get their little partner, and everything's great, and then you never see them again because it's just like mm -hmm. it's, just, it's so draining, right? You gotta. It is draining. Um, now, what would you say about when somebody, somebody? I've had people come in and they say, "I'm looking to get into speedrunning. Uh, what game do you think I should play?" Now, I always have a an, an exact answer for that, but what what would you say your answer to that would be for anyone? Uh, I don't. I don't have an answer. I mean. <laughs> I give the you know it's just typical like what whatever what do you want to play you know true but I mean so perfect example with what you did with this game you've played hundreds of games before this game and you never took any of those games as serious as this one but then you play this sure. one and then boom that like that was it right so like it's almost sure. as lame as it sounds it's almost as if the game kind of found you because you've sort of you've played so many games and it just didn't give you that spark and then you played the one game so it has to be a game that you can. That has a lot of replay value for you, right? You can just like play for me, yeah. yeah, yeah. For me, I mean, a lot of people like bounce them between different games and you know, like simpler games, but doing more of them. Mm -hmm. Like you look at it, like a Feasel or somebody like that. He oh, plays definitely. a lot of different games, but he gets a, you know records in a lot of different games. So I, I don't know. Do you think there's a difference between getting a bunch of records in a bunch of different games and taking that one game to a to a record that's not easily like like when you're a various record like grinder and stuff like that do you think more of your records are a little bit easier to beat rather than sticking with like with one game i look at your run and i say that i could never beat that <laughs> right right your run looks well, impossible it, but other people who haven't it, put as much time into certain games their runs might seem a little bit easier to achieve it i mean i would yeah they should be easier to achieve uh you know this yeah i, I would agree with that yeah yeah you never know. It would though, be, right? very, the game it would be impossible be, for me, but it would take know. forever for somebody to beat this run if they had never, you know, tried to speedrun this before. To set out and say, "I'm gonna get the," if you've not speedrun Super Metroid at all, you said, "I'm gonna get the any percent world record." Yeah, that's that's a tall order. That's, a, that's <laughs> yeah, right. that's big. Like, and I've played this before, and I even like, and I learned a lot of strats a while mm -hmm. ago. But I, I mean, even I look at that, and I, nope. Well, let's, I mean, nope. Let's, let's put perspective like a little bit. If I can find this page again, there's only like five people that have had it for like many, many years. So, me, Behemoth, Oats. Um, oh, if you have Hot it, Power. link it to me in Discord. Is it this one? You're talking about the wiki? It's the same wiki, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna click on that. I can so do, I can throw that up. Since 2012, only five people have held the, this record. I mean, since 2006, only six people have held the record. So that's insane. Yeah. The, the the any percent, and it's it's just it just has the track record. Like, look at how many you've been the biggest competitor, right? It's like people are like, well, I'm trying to take down that Zost again, right? Um, pretty present. Cot Power and Garrison mm -hmm. were a little bit. We're at the beginning, though. Sort of like the beginning of when I when I got into it for sure. Like, the beginning of the modern era, I would definitely say, is Garrison and Cop Power. Yeah, because I met you... The first time I met you was at the, the GDQ in 2014. So that, that was mm -hmm. already almost five years ago, right? That was uh, AGD, AGDQ 2014, right? The big the big Super Metroid race. Yeah. That was the big... That was the one, man. Filled the room. I remember that. that if, you didn't, if you weren't there early, you weren't getting in, man. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Yeah, I remember meeting you there. That's right. In the practice room, I think. Yeah, I told you, and you still didn't live up. 
man. I asked you. You lied to me. <laughs> to my face. I was, I'm still waiting. But now it's not even a thing anymore. It's spike suit, Sam. It's not even. That's how long it's taken you to teach me. It's not even a thing anymore. Oh, that's awesome. Right on, man. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't really have uh, any other uh, special questions or anything. So, if that's it. If you okay. gotta head off and get your stream done, or you know, whatever it is, that take a nap. King Zosi's gotta do. You can it's definitely go ahead and plug time. your plug your stream in there for anyone in my stream who's interested in following you and checking out your stream and trying to put some of these strats into their viewing pleasure if they want to come watch you. Yeah, guys, go give him a follow. He's he's a full-time streamer, if I'm not correct. That's or if correct. I am correct, that is correct. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. No normally nighttime, though, right? Yeah, usually I've been streaming, like, it's, like, I'm EST. Um, and I've got, like, a really... I'm a night owl, so, like, I Me usually too. stream. I don't really have a schedule, but I try to stream a lot. Um, I'll, I'll be kind of busy for the next week, but I'll be streaming a lot after that. But yeah, I usually stream uh, midnight to uh, 10 in the morning, like a late night, chill, sleepy stream with really good speedruns, my thing, I guess. Well, as long as there's pajamas, then make sure. There's always pajamas. Yeah, make sure it's really got that nighttime feel to it. That's right. All right, dude. Well, thank you so much for the interview, man. Learned so much about this and all about Super Metroid. Even though I thought I knew stuff about it, you know, there's always more to learn. I'm sure everyone else here appreciated it as well. So I'll let you get back to your, your nighttime pajama, pajama stuff. <laughs> All right. No problem, man. <laughs> Have a good one. Thanks yeah. for having me on. No problem, man. Take it easy. See you. Bye. Did you guys have fun? Did you guys enjoy that? Man, I love Zos. He's so, like, humble and, like, smart about his shit. I love it. He's so good at what he does. The the determination alone should really... That should have been his answer to, like, what it was about, like, speedruns. He should have been, like, determination. <laughs> he should have been, be like me. It was, just, it was just fantastic. That was a great interview. Yeah, man, it's all fun stuff. I love it all. My, it, I was so intrigued that, like, I didn't stop to eat for, like, a second here. I got, like, food here. Thank you for the interview. Yeah, you guys should thank me, okay? I already know everything you told me, okay? I already knew that stuff. I didn't need to know anything. I did it for you guys, okay? That's how much I love you guys. <laughs>